hi i'm eleanor eleanor.jane.again on instagram um, i'm going to show you how to do a reboot today and um, the one i'm going to show you is this black center part so this is going to have a fringe later but i'll do that in another video but it's just a black reroot in black alpaca and I'm going to go through all the steps of how I made this so that you can make one for yourself at home. So you can see it's just on a fake Neo scalp. Um, it's got a centre part line and it's a nice full reroute done using the knot method. Okay, so to start rooting the scalp, you'll need a scalp. This is a regular colour one. This is a AliExpress scalp. Um, AliExpress, Taobao, whatever you want to call it. It's just a generic um, fake replacement scalp. Um, you'll also need something to paint your scalp with. Um, I'm just using acrylic. You'll need a brush. I've just got a nice soft bristle brush. You'll need something to make holes with, so I've got an arm. Something to sand the scalp with, so I've just got a little sanding sponge. Again, you'll need another brush to brush the hair. And you'll need some hair that you've already prepared into plugs. I'm going to start by taking my scalp and I'm going to lightly buff it with my sanding sponge just to get some of that shine off. This will help the paint to stick. If you haven't buffed it, the paint just won't stick as well and it's likely to peel off. So just keep doing that until the whole scalp is not shiny don't worry about getting close to the edge because even if you get close to the edge most of these scalps will go on customized dolls and customized dolls have matte face plates so it doesn't matter if the edges are matte once your scalp is significantly less shiny it's ready to be painted so you can bring back your acrylic and bring back your paintbrush with the acrylic paint, you don't want to use too much because what you want to have is a thin layer around that doesn't um, doesn't crack. So you want to get a good coverage with colour, maybe two very thin coats, maybe three, we'll see how it goes. But what you don't want to do is slap on a big thick coat because this is likely to just crack as you go. So you don't want it right to the edge because remember that the hair is not going to go right to the edge. So you just want to leave a little line of the colour of the scalp. This gap is the gap before you see the hair so you don't want it to be too big because ideally you want the hair quite close to the edge but because there is an inside lip I'm just going to get rid of some of this paint there's a bit too much on there because there is an inside lip you can't get completely down to the very very bottom don't worry if it's not completely straight because again we're going to cover this in hair and our line of hair will be straight and straight in that Now that it's dry, you're ready to start making your holes. So make sure you know where the front and the back is. So I know that this is the back because this is the wide space that's left for the screws to go in. And this is the front. Right. So what I like to do is I like to make all my outside holes just for the lip. 
um, for your actual hairline. And I like to make my parting holes so that I know how many plugs I'll need for that. And I can use all my excess plugs to fill in the rest of the area. This is going to be a middle part um, with a fringe. So I'm going to start by taking my tool and making my hairline, leaving small gaps between the plugs because this will be the first row of hair. I don't want it to appear gappy. So you can see that they aren't very spaced apart because I know that each hair is about a millimetre in diameter. So I want them about that close together so that the hair poofs out and fills up that hole. And I'm going to keep going until all of the outside edge is done. So I've just made all of my ones for my outside edge. And that was 117. It's going to be hard to show on the black scalp, so I thought I'd draw it. My middle part, I want it to come just past the centre point of the scalp because I want this hair to hang nicely down there. I don't. If it doesn't go past the centre, sometimes there can be a weird kind of bald spot here where you can see the separate plugs, which is not what I'd like. So I'm going to find out how many that is. So what I sometimes do is I drag with my tool to leave an indentation going down um, because this is where you fetch the hair so it's going to be covered anyway and I just want to make sure I go past that halfway mark so I don't think you can see that very well but I can see it and I'm going to make dots that go on either side of the line so they can be crisscrossed over but still nice and close together. I accidentally missed a step but once you've got your first two down the middle you want to put a row either side because your first two are going to cross each other and your rows either side they're going to go flat down so that you don't see any gaps in between. Right and this one's ready to start rooting. My best advice to you would be to figure out how many plugs you'll need for your um, part lines because I've got four part lines that come in at 120 and my outside edge comes in at 117. Make up all of your hair beforehand so you know how much you've got to work with. So I bundle mine into groups of 50 like this and then when I've got lots of them I put them into a group of five that has 250. So I know that I've got 250, 500, 750, 850, and then a few spare. Um, so I know that's what I have plugged up ready to work with. I've got a lot more access to more black alpaca. I would normally put a thousand in a reroute, but this one isn't supposed to be as thick. This is supposed to be quite a smooth, um, not like a poofy one. Right, so now my next step is I'm gonna get a crochet hook I'm going to be working with a one millimeter crochet hook today um, and I'm going to get my scalp and I'm going to pop it through the holes. It's quite hard to see this on the camera. I'm going to pop it through a hole and when it comes out the other side I'm going to catch some of my hair. One of the reasons why it's so much easier to have all your plugs pre-made is because it makes this part go so speedy and it really feels like you're accomplishing quite a lot. So I've got my hair and I give it a slight twist, wrap it around my finger, catch it on my crochet hook and then I pull it through. And I'm going to keep doing this, just going around some of the outside edge. I'm not going to go the whole way around. Um, because I find that if you go the whole way around, the hair's in your way. So I'm going to do a little bit of here, a little bit of there, and then I'm going to start my part line. So slight twist, pull it through, one out later. 
again if you see any problems it's really best that you address them as you go along it's much harder to sort problems out further along the line so i'll do maybe so now i'm going to go through and going to do this middle thatch line and i find it easiest to thatch as i go along so my one on the right hand side i'm going to pull that hair over to the left then i'm going to go and get my one from the left hand side and i'm going to pull this one over to the right so you're just crossing the rows over i'll do a few more so you can see so if you continue through pulling all the ones on the left to the right and then pulling all the ones on the right to the left as you go along what you'll end up with is something like this where you don't have two rows next to each other and a bald patch in between you've got rows that cross over and leave quite a natural looking hairline so once you've got the two middle ones rooted you'll be able to see that you've got a nice thatch here where they crisscross over one another i am going to make another video explaining thatching better so you can see it in two different colors but my next step is to fill in the lines either side So this is what uh, about 100 holes look like and so I'm going to do that, plug them in and then I'm going to keep repeating it around the scalp. The next step involves a little bit of counting again. So I've separated out my 117 I'll need for my outside edge, even though I have already filled in a few so I will have some spare and then I've counted what I've got left and I've got 600 and a few so I know that now if I get my pen if I divide my scalp into six sections I can put a hundred in each section so what i'll do is i'll work my way around the scalp knowing that i can put 100 in actually i'm lying because i would normally start here <laughs> so i'll work my way around and pop them all in a good way of dividing up your scalp instead of drawing on it I make holes and that way I can see where my sections are and the holes aren't a problem because I'm going to be filling these in with hair anyway. So I know that each one of these, if it takes a hundred plugs, I'll have a relatively even root. You can root slightly more sparsely on the back if you'd like to because all the hair will fall that way when it's on the doll. Um, but I know that I will have enough hair if I do it that way. So as I go around and do my segments, what I do is I root the hairline only as I do that segment. Otherwise, if you root all the hairline, it's just flapping around, it gets in your way when you try and do the inside. And if you leave it till last, it is the most boring part to do because there's so many and they're so close together. So I find that this way it helps my morale because I do a little bit as I go along. And then when this is done, I can tie all of that together with this section and get it out of the way. So this is what uh, about a hundred holes look like and so I'm going to do that, plug them in and then I'm going to keep repeating it around the scalp. Once each section is complete 
just band it up and get it out of the way so you can work on your next section. So that's one out of the six sections done and I'm going to move on to the other side and do this section here. Okay, so now that I've got two, I'm going to section my two off and I'm going to carry on working my way around. So now I've finished this one, I've just got one, two, three left to go. I'm going to do this one first because it's closest to the front of my scalp. And that way, if I do run into any problems and do need to use more hair than I was expecting, I've still got my back ones left, which don't need as much hair. Ideally, I'd like to fill them up, but if they end up being slightly more sparse, that's okay because they're at the back and all of this hair will be leaning backwards over it and it will still be very, very thick. Now I've done four out of my six and I've just got these two left to go. So I've already counted my plugs and I know that I have enough to do my outside edge, that my hairline will be full. And I've got a hundred to put in here, a hundred to put in there. Okay, so now I've done five sections. I've just got one of the back sections left and I'll come back to you once I fill that one in. She's all done. Lovely. Lovely thatch line, all finished and nice and full on the inside. Perfect and ready to style. So I hope that was helpful and if you do have any questions just pop them below in comments or give me a follow on Instagram and pop them there because I check Instagram more often. Um, I'm going to try and do a few more of these and yeah I really just hope that they're useful.